Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Ton of big news, huge news out for cryptocurrencies, but that still hasn't stopped Bitcoin's dominance increasing. So we're going to check out the news today, plus the charts. So make sure you stick around till the end, hit that like button, subscribe, bell notification icon, join me on Instagram and Twitter, daily Q&As. Let's dive in. Crypto market caps and the fear and greed is what we'll get into first up. 1.57 trillion, remember our 50%, 1.34 trillion. If you aren't subscribed to our newsletter, make sure you do that down below. Drop your email address and name. We are covering this in today's newsletter. So if you miss out on this one, don't worry. They're free. And they come out every two weeks. We are going on to the next market caps of the majors. Bitcoin, 696 billion, 37,000. Now we did see the pump up and we have now fallen a little from the high of around 38k yesterday. Ethereum still around 2.5k, Cardano $1.55. It's still holding steady uh, above its old highs that it put in a couple of months ago. So this is a good sign for Cardano. And our other cryptos which have been doing not so well, Polkadot, Uniswap. Solana's done reasonably well, but it's just pausing now at around $41. I think this will still do all right. Obviously, we're going to have a look at those in future videos. Uh, but the big one that we continue to come back to is Polygon and it continues heading down. Now, I don't take any pleasure in talking about it heading down. It's just more around looking at what happens in the market day to day and the extreme excitement over a couple hundred percent. So if there's no profits taken, this is what happens later. It sort of just fades away into the distance yet again. And this is just cryptocurrency in general. If you've been in the space long enough, this happens time and time again. Let's look at the fear and greed. We are now at 21 again today, so it's not a buy on our fear and greed plan. If you don't know what I'm talking about, stay around till the end. I'll have a link to that video at the end of this one. Basically, we're just looking at 15 or under on this plan to keep us in the market and investing during the uh, quiet, the bear market periods within our overall bull market. And so this is what happens a lot of the time. People just aren't sure when to buy, how to buy, why to buy, setting up a simple plan will help. A simple plan just removes all of the emotion and the uncertainty. So that's why I bang on about it so often. Twitter, as I've pointed out multiple times over the last few days and several weeks from the top on the 14th of April, uh, we looked at the crash, the three days down, the 11 straight days down, the week high, the week lower swing top into May when everyone's calling 80K, wasn't looking like it. We were consolidating. We were moving out of positions, yes, back into, say, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, some of the major stuff and stable coins. But the point was not to get onto new trends of altcoins. It was very late in the run. And just put another reminder, just a retweet. Altcoins, I'm not rushing into buying anything. And I'll show you uh, uh, in just a moment on the charts as well. Even though we have fantastic news, we've got lots of great news for some of the altcoins that we've been tracking for quite a while. Looking at coin market cow, we've got test nets coming up for Ethereum and all the other massive events here, which a couple of months ago, a few months ago, this would have excited the market and pushed their prices up. But now even with this news, it's not doing anything. This is just what happens in different stages of the cycle. Some people will say the news is what runs the market. I do not agree with that. It comes after. The chart shows us what's about to happen and then the news comes out. As retail, we are always told last. We're always told last. We don't get the news before it happens. That's just the nature of the game, which is why I tend to look at charts. Looking at some of the big news. So we're just going to cover the news on Bitcoin, crypto, get into some of the alts and then check out the charts. So Bitcoin jump liquidates 400 million worth of short crypto positions. So about 70,000 traders have been liquidated, including nearly 320 million worth of short BTC and 70 million of ETH, also XRP and Dogecoin shorts. That's possibly led to part of the pump that we saw over the last couple of days, going from about 31K to about 38K, and now we've retreated a little bit into around the 36K. This is for Bitcoin, of course. And being that Bitcoin is denominated in US dollars, the rest of the cryptos will continue to slide as Bitcoin slides in their USD value. Checking out some of the news, of course, El Salvador is still in the news. Notice how the news has now shifted. The narrative has shifted into countries accepting Bitcoin. And we're looking at India and other countries who are potentially looking to cryptocurrency. 
Bitcoin Beach provides clues about El Salvador's greater B BTC intentions. Now, a few alarming things said by the president of El Salvador. If there is a lady who sells fruit in the market, she is obliged to receive payment in Bitcoin. Now, there's a few other comments about this. The one thing, and I guess this is my opinion that I'm putting into the videos, I don't think anyone should be forced to do anything. So no one should be forced to receive Bitcoin payments. And I understand that there are other reasons within the law to say that this isn't the case and they had to put some sort of reasons in. I'm just saying generally, if we start to get on that path of forcing people to do things, I think that really takes away from what cryptocurrency is about. So I'm, I'm just going to have my ear on the ground about those things moving forward in case one political party says you must do this, the other says not to do this, etc. We've seen this in the past. So I just want to learn from history when it comes to these sorts of stories. The IMF has a problem with El Salvador Bitcoin, uh, El Salvador's Bitcoin ambition. So they're basically just saying they have potential issues making Bitcoin legal tender. I mean, we're probably to expect that someone had to say that this wasn't a good thing. Every restaurant, barbershop, every bank, everything can be paid in US dollars or Bitcoin and nobody can refuse payment. So this is the second tweet that I've now seen and uh, referenced in news articles saying that the president is saying that no one can refuse payment of Bitcoin. We understand that there has to be legal tender and you have to accept legal tender in your country. So it's a bit of a, a difficult scenario, I think, by making something a legal tender and then forcing people to, to use something like Bitcoin. I think it should be voluntary and it's going to win because it's voluntary, because we want to do it, not because we're forced to do something. IMF's, IMF will discuss its objections with the president in person during a virtual meeting later today. So we'll see what happens, uh, I guess, in the next 24, 48 hours. On a positive note to mining Bitcoin and using Bitcoin in these countries of Latin America, they have plenty of geothermal energy. We know this has been done in Iceland for several years now, using the volcano power to uh, mine Bitcoin. So hopefully this gets taken up across many other countries around the world and it does just become part of what we want to do, not what we're forced to do. You know, this looks like a good thing. We're using natural energy. It's all renewable. Why not? Now, India is reportedly considering classifying Bitcoin as an asset. I've seen India flip-flop more than crypto YouTubers. I don't understand what they're trying to do. I honestly don't trust whatever comes from the news when it comes to India. I'm sorry to any Indian viewers. There must be some easier explanation about all of this. Sure, it could probably tell us here, but then who knows? Next week, we'll have another report saying India wants to ban it. India thinks it's good. It's it's probably not being reported as it is actually happening within the political parties. But nonetheless, this is obviously making headlines at the moment to say India is considering uh, using Bitcoin and uh, making it an asset class very soon. So it's news, but I take it with a grain of salt. Now on to some altcoin news. We've got Zilliqa. Zilliqa is locked across DeFi. It's at a total lock 742 million. Circulating supply is 11.3 billion. So that makes it 50% locked. Now I'm bringing up Zilliqa. It's one of the cryptos that we've been following on the channel. So a few updates here for Zill. They've got 20 million on-chain transactions, around 4 million of these trigger smart contracts. We also have their quarter three roadmap looking pretty reasonable. They got their swap, their decentralized exchange for ZRC2 tokens. They have their bridge between Zillica and ETH. Now I'm talking this up. Zill looks good. There's a lot of news, but remember I am known as the, the bearish pessimist dressed in bullish clothes or whatever people love to, to say down in comments. Essentially, we are in a period of the market which isn't pumping at the moment. So there's a lot of good news that, and it's not affecting price that much. And I will see, I, I think Zillica is going to continue to slide. I think the price is probably going to continue to slide. We're about break even on our Bitcoin value from when we first were looking at the breakout on Zill BTC. The dollar looks like it's probably going to continue to slide. So that's Zill USD is going to continue to slide. What I'm saying here is that it can present opportunity. There's a lot of stuff being built. And these are the times that excite me rather than the tops of the market where the sheep are getting excited by all of the news. We've got good news. Nothing is happening to price. 
price is, is slipping and it looks like it's going to continue to slip further, this is where I don't take my eye off the ball and I continue to DCA into projects that I think will have uh, a good foundation moving forward. Now, this isn't pumping up Zill in particular. It's um, looking at this as an example of when are the good times to be buying. Go back and do your research and see those times throughout the market. This was 2019, 2020. Lots of good news, no price action. Price was down. Price had small spikes and dumps. But looking back, these are the times that you want to be investing in the market. So continue to do research, find out about the projects, look at what they have on offer. They've got staking, for example, with uh, Zillica. There's 13% just for a simple delegation. And, uh, you know, continue to update what you understand about the project so that it, it cements the certainty around that project for you moving forward into the next bull stage of the market. Now to some big news for crypto companies. Ledger closes 380 million funding round with 1.5 billion valuation. So this is pretty positive in the industry, especially after Bitcoin has dropped 50%. We're still getting a lot of funding into crypto projects. So some people think it's, it's dead. We're dropping, it's not coming back. And that was the peak to end all peaks. I'm still seeing a lot of investing going on, uh, a lot of investing into crypto projects, not even particular projects that have a coin. So Ledger, 380 million, that gives it an implied valuation of 1.5 billion after the funding. So this is one of the highest venture capital funding rounds of the cryptocurrency industry. This wouldn't happen if the market was about to fall over and collapse completely, like everything's over. Uh, so long term, I still see this as a very, very bullish space, especially when uh, development is taking place during these down periods of a market. Interactive brokers, if you're unfamiliar with this because you haven't traded stocks or CFDs or anything like that, uh, these guys are quite big in that space. And interactive brokers enable to enable crypto trading by the end of the summer. They have uh, 1.3 million customers uh, customer accounts in quarter one of 2021. So that's, again, exposing it to actual traders. They intend to be traders. They've got traders on their platforms. So that's why I like this is pretty strong news to show that uh, crypto is still getting integrated into a lot of trading platforms. And if you still need to understand about the industry a little more, we've got billionaire Tim Draper talking about how crypto can massively transform four industries, in particular finance, insurance, government, which we are now seeing with El Salvador, and healthcare. So this can reduce corporate expenses on accounting and legal help. Draper believes insurance companies could rely completely on artificial intelligence and surveillance, which he says would reduce disagreements and insurance claims. So this would then be on the blockchain. Bitcoin and smart contracts could offer similar benefits to governments around the world. And he also believes healthcare records could go on the blockchain. So there's a lot of use for uh, cryptocurrencies and particular blockchains. So if you were doubting it, personally, that's not how I see it. I see these times, as I've mentioned many times before, as the areas to get into a market, especially when there is still so much to be developed. It's just about patience. Polkadot Akala raises over 100 million in KSM tokens in Kusama's parachain auction. So I think this explains the rise in the KSM price, which we'll look at on the chart in just a moment. So with the auctions running on KSM, this is probably going to continue to bring some excitement to the KSM token. This is going to be reliant, I believe, on what's coming next. Is it going to be a big project that needs to get funding or is it something that people aren't that interested in? And that's going to play into the charts, which is, again, why we continue to look at the charts. We had huge volume on these last few days, probably for Akala, which has uh, 100 million in raised funds, as we just saw. And so if we don't find another project like that, possibly we have a little drift away. So we're just going to keep following this if this is a token that, uh, you know, that we want to invest in. Definitely keep an eye on these charts and pay attention to where the highs are and then where the next highs settle. Lower highs mean a downtrend. So just keep that in mind. We had a higher high that has failed and broken one of the lows here. So that is turning into a downtrend by the looks of the chart, just simply looking at swings. Obviously, this is GAN, GAN analysis. Let's look at the dominance uh, uh, one last time as well. Remember the double top, we hit our 200%. That's the first sign of bullishness for the dominance, which means looking for Bitcoin to increase in value against the alts. That's what had me 
thinking that we need to start uh, consolidating further. And this ties in exactly with the top in Bitcoin, well, the lowest swing top in May. Then we see this pattern here. This isn't your traditional TA looking for, uh, you know, different momentum indicators and stuff like that. This this uh, pattern right here is a GAN first higher swing bottom. So we have a, a little swing here. We have the low. And now this run of the up to the next top is a strong reversal pattern. So we've just seen the first leg coming out. Ideally, we want to get past 46%. We want to break past the 50% level, continue further, maybe have a few little dips in between and get to this 100% point of 50. This is to give strength back to Bitcoin for this next stage. So we load up on Bitcoin, Bitcoin does its run. We start to funnel out of Bitcoin into the altcoins and the cycle repeats. This is what happened through November, December, January, February, and then the alt started to, to do their dance. And if we believe that that's what's happening in the cycle, then you know this is showing it in the charts as well. That's a wrap of the cryptocurrency news, Bitcoin news, why Bitcoin is still pushing on strong, even if it dumps past 30K. I'm not in a rush to be buying any altcoins just yet. There are a few that I've got my eye on, of course, but overall, generally speaking, this is a time to see what's going on and continue to follow Bitcoin to make life easier. Now, obviously, that's why I'm playing it. So not financial advice to you guys. I'm just letting you know how I'm playing the market. And if you want to know more in more closer real time, go and follow me on Twitter. This is where I'm putting out all of my thoughts with cryptocurrency, chatting it up and giving you updates of all of my other thoughts going on with the crypto and investing. Now, if you want to join us for daily Q&As, follow me on Instagram, jason.pazino. There's only one account. Don't worry about the scammers. Yes, there are plenty of them, but this is the account here. So follow me here and I'll do more than just baby photos. And, uh, you know, you can follow me for the Q&A, get some good stuff out of it. So I'll leave you guys with that. Thank you once again. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, catch you over there or on the next video. But until then, have more fun to get more done.